There is who we know ourselves to be. There is how we present ourselves to the world, the way we want the world to know us. Then there's this distortion field thing. And somewhere way over here is how the world actually perceives us. The distortion field between how we want the world to see us and how the world actually sees us is created by expectations, assumptions, denial, fear, the media, stereotypes. There's all kinds of things that lie in this area between how we want the world to see us and how the world actually does see us. There's generally a difference between who we know ourselves to be and how we want the world to see us as well. They're not always entirely the same thing. So I'm going to give you a few examples of these three realities and how things get distorted once we get out into the world. So, uh, I have known of myself. I had known myself to be gay since I was three years old. I didn't know that gay is what it was, but I knew that I was different. I chose my male friends because they were cute, and I chose my female friends because we had common interests. So there's how I knew myself to be. How I presented myself to the world changed over the years. When I was young, I just wanted to fit in, and I just did whatever I needed to do, just trying to at another stage, I didn't want to fit in. I wanted to be different, unique. I wanted to be my own person, whatever that meant. It wasn't gay, but whatever it meant, I was going to be unique. And then there was a period when uh, I tried being gay, and that didn't work out very well. So I tried being straight. Well, that didn't work out. I tried being gay. I tried being bi. I tried being straight. I tried being gay. It changed back and forth. But what I tried to present to the world very different. I tried different things at different times in my life. We walk through the distortion field. And people over here, they took a look at me and said, yeah, he's gay. Or they tried to listen to me and they were just confused as they tried to listen to what I tried to put out. But what they saw here was often something very different from what I was trying to be, trying to let people know I was, and from what I actually knew myself to be. Let me tell you a, another story about a family member, my Uncle Jim. When I was a kid, my Uncle Jim was the coolest guy in the world. He used to take me out on his motorcycle, and he took me for my first fishing trip. I hate fishing, but he took me for my first fishing trip, and it was great. He used to take us hiking into very obscure places on Vancouver Island where we would see these neat waterfalls that nobody else would get to see, and we'd climb over top of glaciers. It was great. He was cool. And my Uncle Jim's opinion of me was really, really important. My Uncle Jim worked for the Army. And so that gave me, I thought, good reason to believe that he might not take the whole gay thing very well. And so a lot of this time that I spent experimenting here, trying, a lot of that was wrapped up in what I thought my Uncle Jim and the rest of my family, how they would receive that. Because I was pretty sure they wouldn't receive it very well. Well, eventually I was faced with a choice. So we talked about choices a, a couple of days ago. I finally had a choice. I could either come out to my family or not come out to my family. And coming out to my family meant that they had an opportunity to participate in my life. Or I could not come out to my family and I could develop a life all of my own and never speak to my family again. And I decided to come out to my family. My, my uncle and his wife wrote me immediately. My aunt said, I'm so glad to find you. And then she said, you know, my best friend is gay. I didn't have a bridesmaid at my wedding. He stood up for me instead. In fact, I named your cousin after him. That's where Colin got his name. He's from my best friend. And he and his partner have been like gay uncles to your cousins. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> okay, so now we use our model again. My uncle and my aunt saw themselves as being affirming individuals. The gay thing just wasn't an issue. 
And then there's what they presented to the world. And what they presented to the world was don't ask, don't tell. Just never say anything. And then we go through the distortion field of all the assumptions, all the expectations, all the history, and you get me out here in the world looking at my aunt and uncle. And the messages that I received, well, I remember hearing a great deal of praise of Dr. Laura. You know who Dr. Laura was? Dr. Laura was a, a radio advice and uh, columnist person who was very, very anti-gay throughout the 90s. I heard condemnation of Ellen DeGeneres for using her television program as a propaganda device for spreading gay propaganda. And I have uh, my cousin married a man whose father was a United Church minister until 1988. He left the United Church when we decided not to prevent people from being ordained because of their sexual orientation. Those are the messages that got through the distortion field. And so even though my aunt and uncle had this sense that they were very affirming individuals, and which indeed they were, There is a way that they presented themselves to the world that was just don't ask, don't tell. And by the time it went through that distortion field, it got to me, and there was don't tell, because it's not safe. Let's bring it closer to home. I was talking to uh, an acquaintance of mine here in Brandon, whom I've known for a couple of years. And this acquaintance of mine is deeply closeted. But they've lived in Brandon for a very long time, long enough to know some of you very well. Really well. And so I said, well, why don't you talk to those individuals? They'd love to bring you to church and to bring you into an affirming environment. They'd really be open to that. And my acquaintance says, I can't do that. I, well, those individuals have always presented themselves as being really conservative and anti-gay. Now, I know those individuals, and they're anything but conservative and educated. But you see, there's the way we present ourselves, and there's this distortion. And that distortion field changes how it is that we want to present ourselves, and how people receive us. So here I have an acquaintance in Brandon who is convinced that some of the most affirming people in the congregation are anti-gay. If we want people to hear, if we want the people to hear through that distortion field, we need to speak louder. We need to be more articulate. We have to be really clear so that the message gets through this field, through all the assumptions, through all of the expectations, through all the stereotypes, so that the world out here can actually hear it. Do you know how many churches there are in Brandon? There are over 200. And of all those churches, how many of them can a gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, two-spirited, queer questioning person go into and know that they are affirmed? It's a pretty safe bet. It's a pretty safe bet to say that if it's a church involved, the gay lesbian community is involved. If we at Knox want the world to hear something different, we need to speak loudly enough, clearly enough, to be heard through this wall 